This is the 16th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In our previous video, we looked at the power management and hardware settings for our Synology NAS. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can protect our NAS from power fluctuations and sudden power cuts. This will be achieved by fitting an APC SMT 750i Smart UPS to our Synology NAS. A UPS, or Uninterruptible Power Supply, is a device that once you connect it to your home network, will provide emergency power if the mains power should fail. The 750i is classed as a Smart UPS. This is because if the power should fail, it can automatically make your Synology NAS gracefully power down. This will not only protect your data from corruption, but it will also help to protect your NAS hardware. We ended our previous video viewing the desktop of the disk station manager. But in order to set up and configure the UPS, we will first need to power down our NAS. So from the desktop, let's select the user account icon and then from the drop down menu, select Shutdown. While we wait for our NAS to power down, let's close our browser window and take a look at the APC SMT750i Smart UPS. Within the box, you will find a UPS and the following items a copy of the PowerShoot software, the warranty information, an installation guide. Two IEC male to female power leads, a USB lead, and an RJ45 to serial port lead. The UPS is controlled via a panel at the front of the device. First, we have the power button, then, directly underneath, we have indicator lights to show if the UPS is online working on battery, has a fault, or needs to have its battery replaced. Next, we have the display interface, which can be controlled by two navigation keys, along with the escape key and the enter key. On the rear of the UPS, you will find a sticker covering the power outlets. It is informing us that the battery for the UPS has to be disconnected for transport. Let's remove the sticker and then connect the battery to the UPS. At the rear of the UPS, we have a slot for fitting a network management card. An NMC would be used to monitor and automatically power down multiple network devices in the event of a mains power failure. To the left of the NMC slot, we have the circuit breaker and overload protector, followed by the input for the mains power. Next we have the internal battery connector, followed by a bank of power outlets that use IEC female ports. Directly above the power outlets, we have a single USB port. Then next to the USB ports, we have an RJ45 port, specifically to allow the UPS to control a device via a serial connection and the power management software. As our NAS is now powered down, we have disconnected its power brick. You can see that one end of the power brick uses an IEC kettle lead. We need to replace the kettle lead with one of the IEC male to female extension cables that came with our UPS. We can now reconnect the power brick to the back of our Synology NAS. Then taking the supplied USB lead, we need to plug one end into one of the USB ports. This will allow the 750i to shut down the NAS in the event of a power cut. Now taking the other end of our USB lead, 
we can connect it to our 750i. Next, we need to connect the power brick of our NAS to one of the IEC power outlet ports. Finally, we can connect the mains power cable into the 750i and then plug it into the mains. Let's now power on the 750i. As part of the process for creating this video, we first had to make sure that we were familiar with our UPS. However, when it came time to film, we found that even after performing a factory reset, we could not completely replicate the steps that we initially took to set up our 750i. However, so that you can have a better understanding of what we originally saw when we first initialized our 750i, we will factory reset this device and run through the setup wizard. When our UPS receives mains power, it will illuminate the online status light. As you can see here, the LED display will ask us to run through a setup wizard. First, we're asked to select a language. We can use the up and down arrows to choose an option. When we select enter, that on-screen option is set. The next option is local power. The default option is good and should be used if you're unsure of the quality of your power supply. The final option is menu type. While there are two options, we will leave this option set to standard. When we press the enter key, we're shown the load and battery of our UPS. Let's once again power up our NAS. Once our NAS is rebooted, we need to log back into the Distation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the DSM's desktop, if we select Control Panel, and then from the System Grouping, we choose Hardware and Power. From within the Hardware and Power panel, if we now select the UPS tab, we can see that our NAS has detected the UPS. When we tick Enable UPS Support, Device information becomes active and we can review some of the basic information about our APC 750i. You can see that the option Time Before Distation Enter Safe Mode is set until low battery. On a Synology NAS, Safe Mode will stop any services that are running, it will unmount any storage volumes and then it will shut the NAS down. When we enable this option, we're presented with two fields that allow us to set when the NAS will enter safe mode in the event of a power failure. This could be in seconds, minutes or hours depending on the size of the battery that is being used by your UPS. We will select 10 minutes, which should in the event of a power cut be enough time for everyone to save their work and shut down their computer. You can see that shutdown UPS when the system enters safe mode is enabled by default. For our purposes, we will leave this option enabled. Finally, we have the option Enable Network UPS Server. If we enable this option, when we select Permitted Distation Devices, if there is a power cut, this NAS is able to force another Synology NAS into safe mode. This is done by simply entering the IP address of a Synology NAS into one of the five fields. As a home user, we are not currently using multiple Synology NAS devices. So we will select Cancel and remove the tick from Enable Network UPS Server. When we select Apply, our settings are saved and we can test that our UPS will automatically shut down our NAS in the event of a power cut. Let's simulate a power cut. You can see on the UPS that the status light for battery has now become active, but our Synology NAS continues to run. The NAS will continue to run for 10 minutes. As we approach the 10 minute mark, the UPS will start to count down when it is about to instruct the NAS to enter safe mode. 
When the NAS enters safe mode, the UPS will also power down. If we now turn the power back on, on the front of the UPS, the online indicator light becomes active and our NAS automatically restarts. So to recap, in this video we unpacked and set up an APC Smart UPS 750i. We then connected it to our Synology NAS via a USB lead. With the hardware connected, we configured our Synology NAS so in the event of a power failure, the NAS will enter safe mode automatically after 10 minutes. Then when the power is restored, the NAS will automatically power back on. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how we can expand the storage capacity of our Synology NAS.